I love a good kung fu movie. It's all about the flow and serenity, and the choreography is just really fun to watch. Accounting is also all about flow, not necessarily the flow of energy or of movement, but more of money and resources. Understanding this flow in our business is key because it gives us safety, it gives us insights, and it helps us grow our business because we truly understand the flow of everything within it. Maybe your flow is all out of whack and you feel like punches and kicks are flying at you from every direction. Let's cue the training montage and we'll get your flow back where it needs to be. Now, just to be clear, today we are going through the sales flow. We're going to start with customer creation, setting up the customer accounts properly, along with the chart of accounts, creating a product, getting that set up properly with accounting, and running through a sale all the way up to an invoice and payment. We will not be going through inventory accounting or bank reconciliation, so if you're looking for that, go into one of my other videos. Before entering the dojo, let us breathe and recenter. So here we are. In our friendly neighborhood demo, we're going into contacts and we'll create a new contact. We're going to call this Andrew Test. And the most important thing here that we're going to be looking at is our accounting tab. Scrolling down within this tab, we can see that our accounts receivable account is set to our default accounts receivable account and our accounts payable account is set the same. Now, for the sales example, we're not going to worry about accounts payable because it really doesn't enter into it here. But our accounts receivable account is where the balance of what the customer owes us is going to be stored on the balance sheet when we have invoices created for this customer. So make sure you set this to the right account. If your company does a multi-receivable account setup, you want to be careful and make sure and set this up properly. Another thing that's important here is our payment terms. Now, if you live in the bookkeeping accounting world, you'll be familiar with the fact that when we send an invoice out to a customer, we say, hey, you need to pay this in 15 days or immediately. This is basically our terms with the customer on when they need to pay us, which obviously the name may suggest that, but it's good to understand this. So because we want to understand this fully, let's look at one of these payment terms. So Odoo has come a long way with their accounting. It's improved considerably over the years. These payment terms are now pretty sophisticated. So we can set up our payment terms in such a way that it incentivizes our customers to pay sooner rather than later. This obviously works really well for some customers where we say, hey, you pay 2% less if you pay within 10 days. And you can see that right here. This preview is actually very, very nice as a feature. Make sure to pay attention to it. Beyond that, we're saying that 50% is due in 15 days. I changed this obviously and 50% is due in 30 days so we can see the breakdown here and this is very helpful but make sure you understand these payment terms before you start invoicing your customers because setting these correctly helps make our collections or getting money back from our customers much easier hopping back into the customer card the other thing we need to worry about is fiscal positions now most companies that I know of will opt for a managed solution for this, like AvaTax, but we can set up our own fiscal position. So let's take a quick glance at these just to make sure that we understand what's going on. So a fiscal position essentially tells us what taxes a person should be paying. We can set this up to detect automatically based on certain criteria, okay? And really beyond this, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, normally this product has this tax on it. This is the tax that I want to be replacing that for this, for anyone that's in this fiscal position. Beyond this, I can go into account mapping and I can say, normally on this product, the account for the tax goes to this account, but I'd like to go to this account instead. Now you don't have to do all these things, but we can make it pretty robust so that it accounts for a lot here. So to recap, the three main things that we need to look at for accounting flow on our customers is the payment terms, the default accounts, so that's going to be our receivables account, and then our fiscal position if we're having to take care of taxes outside of a managed solution. So let's go ahead and hop over to products now. We're in a new product. We're going to call this Andrew Test product. And we're going to make sure that this is a storable product. 
So you may think that we're going to start on the accounting tab, but you'd be wrong there. This accounting tab actually isn't important for most companies because this is actually the worst way to manage our accounts. The functionality that we want to use instead is actually our product category. The income and expense account that we use for a product kind of has a waterfall approach to it. Okay, So what we have here in these product categories are all these different settings, and we're just looking at the accounting ones for right now, where the income account is product sales and the expense account is expenses. Now, certainly for managerial accounting, we want to go more in depth for this. But we need to understand how product categories work for accounting. So all is basically everything, right? But we may want to come in and say this is widget group one or widget group two. And on the PL, we want this to be represented differently. So we're going to go into product categories and try and understand this a little bit better. So if we create a new product category and we're going to call this test and it's going to be in parent category all. So what would happen if we didn't have the income account here and the expense account set here is that we would receive the income and expense account from the next level up. So all has certain accounts set on it. So that would trickle down to our test category. And if you guessed, that it's going to trickle down to all the products in test category as well, that's the case. So essentially it looks for the lowest level where the income and expense account are set and pulls from that. This is important for us to understand because we wanna manage this information at the highest level possible. We don't wanna to have to go into every single product and change it. We'd rather change things at a product category level. So for the sake of our example, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this tab and we're gonna create a new income account. We'll go into new and we're going to give this code. Let's see where our income accounts. Probably six. Nope, that's the expenses. Five, four. Okay, product sales. So we're going to do a new one and we're going to put this in as four, one, and then four zeros. Okay, four, one, two, three, four. We're going to call this test product sales. And it's an income account. So we're going to save that and then we're going to come back to our test category here and we're going to call this test product sales. And then we're going to come all the way back to our product that we were creating and we're going to say we want this product category to be test so that then the accounting that we set up on that product category will flow down to this one. So we've set up our income account for invoices that come through this customer, okay? We also need to look at the taxes for this customer. And you may have guessed it, we're gonna dig in a little bit deeper so everybody understands what's going on with taxes. So we certainly need to give our taxes a name. We need to give them a type, meaning what kind of transactions does this apply to? We need to give it a percentage, okay? So this is going to be a percent on each order line, okay? And we can also set a scope, so blank is everything, or we can say this only applies to services or it only applies to physical goods. If we're getting really intense, we can split up the percentage of this tax going to different accounts for invoices and for refunds. Hopping back into our product, we're gonna leave a 15% base tax here, okay? To make things a little bit more fun and to illustrate how fiscal positions work, we're gonna create a new fiscal position called test and we're going to go into here and we're going to say 15% is the tax on the product and we're going to switch it to this new 25% that we just made. Now we're going to go into our customer account and we're gonna set their fiscal position to the new one that we just made. Let's go into the sales and purchase tab. We're gonna to go to fiscal position and test and save. Hopping back over to our product, the last thing that we need to be very, very conscious of is what our invoicing policy is, okay? So essentially we have ordered quantities or delivered quantities. Ordered quantities means that we can invoice the customer at any time once the sales order is confirmed. Delivered quantity sets a control so that when we deliver our different goods and services to the customer, then we can invoice it, but not before. So we're going to set this to delivered quantities because it illustrates some points that we want to highlight. Okay, 
That's some deep stuff. We've set up our products and we've set up our contacts. So let's go ahead and do a sale. So come on over into the sales module and let's go new. Okay. So our customer is going to be our test customer, Andrew Test. Okay. We're going to add a product. It's going to be our test product here. And we'll see that we normally would have a 15% tax. In fact, I'm going to sell to Azure Interior and remove this product and add it back just to show you how that works. So you see the 15%, but when we go back and change this to Andrew Test, we're going to see that future products that we add have that fiscal position applied to them. Really, there's not much else to talk about with accounting at this point. We've got a lot of things queued up, but we don't really have anything happening in accounting just yet. So we want to set this up to where we've got some prices in here. We've got 300 bucks. We've got our tax down here and we're going to confirm this guy. So when we confirm, we can see that two more columns got added in here, delivered and invoiced just to show us where we're at in this process. We clearly haven't delivered anything and we haven't invoiced anything, but we've been part of this whole process. Whereas there may be somebody else coming and checking this later. And this gives them a quick way to see what the status of our sales order is. So let's go ahead and deliver this product real quick. Okay. And we're going to go back to our sales order. And we see now that these are colored blue and that this 300 is here for delivered. This blue tells us that we're ready to invoice something here. There's another place we can see this for accounting. So if we go into sales, we can go to to invoice and orders to invoice. And we can see that our sales order 66 now has something that's ready to invoice. This is obviously super nice because as accountants, we have enough on our plate. So let's go ahead and create an invoice here. Now, something that's important to note is we could have set up a down payment, either a fixed amount or a percentage beforehand. So if your company has a practice of taking 50% down or 75% down, you can do that with Odoo. So let's go ahead and create a regular invoice and show how this shows up. So we see a lot of stuff that we'd expect to see. Our customer is Andrew Test. Our delivery address, meaning where we're sending the invoice, is Andrew Test. Uh, we have an invoice date, which is an auto-populated here. We don't have a payment reference because we're not dealing with that yet. We have a due date that's based on our payment terms, we have our delivery date, our journal, and we have our invoice lines, which are directly tied to what was delivered. So if we had delivered less, it would be less. We have 300 units here that need to be invoiced. Let's peek behind the curtain though. And this is important for anybody that understands accounting to be able to see and trust how do works. So we go to journal items and we see, okay, when I post this, I'm going to have a $300 credit, so an increase to test product sales for my P&L. I'm also going to have this tax received, and I'm going to have an increase to accounts receivable, meaning that the customer is going to owe me $375 based on this invoice. Now, we haven't posted this yet, so none of this has hit our chart of accounts just yet. It's not going to show up on our balance sheet, and it's not going to show up on our P&L. But we're going to go ahead and confirm this because we feel good about it. Now it's posted and has hit our P&L and our balance sheet. We're going to send it to our customer. Now we can send and print. We're actually just going to email this. Okay. And this is exactly what our customer is going to see. They can follow this through and say, okay, this makes a lot of sense. Yes. 375 bucks. Okay. So now we're waiting for the customer to pay us. So if we duplicate this, we can look at our aged receivables real quick and see that Andrew test owes us $375 at this time. We can certainly open this up and see, okay, it's tied to this invoice, but we know what customers owe us because we've set this up properly. Beyond this, we want to look and see just real quick how this hit our P&L. Okay. So we have operating income and we have our test product sales of 300 because remember $75 of that 375 that the customer owes us is actually taxes and doesn't really belong to us and is not income for our company. So the customer knows they owe us money. We know they owe us money. So let's go to the point where they send us a check. And obviously the customer may not send us a check, but we're going to say that they sent us a payment so that we're good there. 
Okay, so I prefer to go this way, customer's payments, because the customer may be paying multiple invoices and this allows us to tie a payment to multiple invoices without it being an issue. You're certainly welcome to go to your invoice and click register payment. That's gonna work just as well, but it makes it a bit more difficult to apply it to other invoices. So we have our payment here. We're receiving money and it defaults to that because we came in from this menu item. We would then want to choose our journal, which each bank account that we're receiving money into should have its own journal. And we're gonna choose our payment method, which right now we only have manual, but we could set that up to where we have check, we have credit card, we have other ways to receive money into our bank. But we're gonna come in and say they paid us the 375. The date of that payment was today, 1130, okay? And we're going to say that the customer that sent us this money was Andrew Test. And right now, again, it's in draft, so we're not going to see anything change here. But once we confirm it, we'll see a couple different changes, okay? So we can go into this and set up payment matching, and we can choose which invoices this should be matched to. We can select both of these, and then click reconcile and that will tie those out so that it shows on our aged receivable as paid or we can come to our invoices right here and we can see that we have this outstanding credit that can now be applied to our invoice so we're going to go ahead and apply that here then we're going to look at our aged receivable real quick and see how Andrew test is showing and Andrew test doesn't show up here anymore because Andrew test doesn't show as owing us any money. The last thing I wanted to show you with this, and this really rounds out what we're doing here is that we see an in payment banner right here. Now this will switch to paid, but I've had a lot of questions from people as far as why does it say in payment right now? Well, this is kind of an audit tool for us saying this payment right here, is applied to this invoice. So it's showing as paid, but the payment, this guy right here, has not yet been reconciled in our bank account. So it's basically saying anything in payment still needs that last step. And if we don't get that last step, this helps us to see maybe this payment wasn't valid because it hasn't hit our bank yet, so where the heck is it? It's a nice little audit tool that Odoo throws in there for you. So that really rounds out our sales flow for accounting. I tried to touch on everything that I think would be important for you to know here so that you can set things up properly to hit your P&L and your balance sheet. As always, please let me know if you have any further questions in the comments, or if there's anything else that you want me to touch on, please drop it in there as well. It helps me to tailor these so that it meets the needs that you guys have. Thank you.